Now in this next game, uh, we see Black play uh, rather better than in the, the previous one, but um, even so, uh, he ends up with uh, quite a bad position, because in going for the counterplay, he neglects control of the d4 and e5 squares, and White manages to occupy those quite effectively. The game is played between um, a young Alexandra Kosteniuk and Steve Giddens uh, in 1999. So we have the, uh, the first few moves. Like this, uh, it, again we've got this 2 knight f3 and 3 knight c3 transposition into the Steinitz variation. Black goes c5, white takes, black goes knight c6, white plays bishop f4, bishop takes c5, bishop d3. We've seen it all before. f6, e takes f6, knight takes f6, and now we've got the castle's queenside plan. Queen e2, castle's, castle's queenside. And here, instead of uh, the bishop d7 that we saw in the last game, uh, Giddens plays his queen out to a5, which really looks much more like it as regards queenside counterplay. White answers with this very calm move. Now, black is probably threatening things like bishop b4 to attack the knight, which defends this pawn, not to mention knight b4. This is a very calm way of meeting uh, these ideas. And now... If black were to play the bishop to b4, I think white can meet it with this move, which, um, in addition to perhaps coming back here, might even come into c7. OK, so uh, knight b4 was played in the game. And um, at first sight, this looks like a really good idea, because you, you're trying to eliminate this bishop on d3, which bears down on black's king side and, and would lend all the, the power to move like g4. But um, the negative side of doing this is that white now gets the control over d4 and e5 again. And uh, Kostanio plays this simple move, bishop d4. And after bishop d7, just plays the knight in. And now with a, a knight here and a bishop here, we can say that white has got some strategic control over the position. Never mind this peace activity over here. That's not serious without a, a good control of the centre. OK, well, Giddens takes off on d4. White recaptures and now brings the knight back here. And at first sight, this looks as if it's shaking white's grip. Um, for example, if, if white now played knight b5, there would follow this move, e5. And then black can't take. White can't take because of this, winning a piece. So, uh, well, white would have to play the, the bishop back here, and then the queen can come here with this idea. And uh, white would really be losing control in that situation. Now, instead of this, then white simply plays this move. At first sight, it looks like black can meet this with, with the move d4, attacking this knight and simultaneously attacking the bishop with two pieces. But what white can do about that is just take on f6. And after rook takes f6, this knight comes to e4, and white now gets a different type of blockade, um, this time on the light squares. Not, not on these two squares, but instead on, on these two. And it's still uh, a very nice position for white. OK. Well, after bishop e5, then uh, black took it off. Queen takes e5, rook a c8, coming to the c-file. Um, white plays f3, which keeps black's knight out of g4. But it might have been even better here to play the, the pawn two squares forwards and have a much more simple control over uh, d4 and e5. And I think that would, would have been a better thing uh, for white to do there. Instead, we just had f3. Uh, she still gets a nice endgame, although um, it's not quite as good as it could have been. Now black goes back there, knight e2, knight d6. Now the pawn comes to f4. But um, Giddens um, defends this really well, actually, um, and manages to, to make a draw. He, that was an instructive moment there. He exchanges off the light-squared bishops, because his bishop is, is worse than white's, so he trades them. And little by little, Black manages to, to save himself. He's under some pressure for quite a while. This is an interesting move, g5, to change the character of the game 
and uh, try and get counterplay on the king side. White takes the pawn here. Black takes this one, hitting this rook. And although white goes a, a pawn up in this, this rook ending, black now has play. He gets a rook to the, the seventh rank. And uh, he then gives up this pawn as well in order to get his other rook to the seventh rank. It's coming down here. And black now had enough to get a draw. And the game ended in peace some moves later here we go b5 takes that one now this pawn is, is pinned white came back here king e6 rook takes b5 rook takes f4 rook takes b7 and the the game is a dead draw so it was a better performance by by black this game um, but he still had some troubles to contend with, and it, it would have been much more difficult, I think, had White played correctly on move 18 and played the, the pawn two squares forward just to, to get a very direct control over, over these two squares on, on, on d4 and e5. So Black's problem still not really um, uh, solved against this uh, uh, aggressive system by White. But then the, the next section, we're going to look at what I consider to be a pretty solid defense. And uh, uh, it's something that if you're going to play this with Black, I would recommend that you do.